This episode, we're gonna talk about where to get raw materials. This is pretty much the most important thing that you need in order to make whatever you're making. And so in our case, raw materials would be cocoa beans or cacao seeds, sugar, milk powder, and cocoa butter. That's the main raw materials that we would use. And when we're looking at our financial statement, it would be separated from other things like packaging inventory. Uh, those are some of the two biggest expenses that we have after labor. And so raw materials for us, we're mostly getting our beans currently from sources that I strongly trust and have a good relationship with. I would like to buy from more people. However, we are not at a size where we can truly bring in quantity and sit on it. And so what we started doing over the last, say year and a half, maybe two years, we buy about a year's supply at a time of beans because that is the most important thing that we need in order to make chocolate. We're buying from Costa Esmeraldas, we're buying from Ucayali, Peru, we're buying from Coco Chameleon, Tanzania, we're buying from Zorzal uh, in Dominican Republic. And as far as other raw materials, sugar is the second largest one. And so we cooperate with a few other chocolate makers where we all group our purchasing power together and buy larger quantities of sugar so we get a better deal. It's coming from Brazil, it's called Native, and they have the green cane project and so this is really neat what they what this very very large organic sugar uh, plantation does is they plant pockets of forests amongst their plantations so that the pests the predators of the pest of the sugar are then consumed by whatever is residing in the forest so they don't need the same amount of pesticides and fertilizers if at all and so i really like that concept it's very innovative and that's why we buy that sugar. The cocoa butter, we've tried a lot of cocoa butter and at first I didn't really know how to do this. How do you choose cocoa butter? There's deodorized, there's odorized, and, or um, natural is what it's called. And so I like natural cocoa butter. I don't think deodorized cocoa butter is bad for any reason, but I just like the idea of the natural cocoa butter um, that still has some of the flavors of the beans. Now the trick is, you want to make sure it was pressed from better quality beans. And the only way to figure that out is, I just started eating cocoa butter. And there's some really bad cocoa butter out there. You can taste the disgusting ferment and dry, drying from those beans. I mean, maybe they were harvested rotten or underripe. There's so many flaws that, would, that most butter gets processed from. And so we buy our butter from Machu Picchu Foods in Peru. It doesn't make sense for us to do it ourselves and we don't add all that much cocoa butter into our chocolate. We're still less than normal and we, we add about 10% into our dark chocolates. And so that's just for you guys all to know, less than normal to add into dark chocolate. Um, but really nice cocoa butter, very consistent. And I like that. Then um, milk powder. We buy ours from organic, it's an organic milk powder from Humboldt Creamery, which would be in Northern California. And there's two types of milk powder. There's roller dried and spray dried. And we, um, oh gosh, I'm mixing these up. We have roller dried milk powder, I believe. And that's the only ones that would be organic. I may have mixed that up. Either way, those are the two ways that you can get milk powder. We can never add water into our chocolate because water and cocoa butter don't mix. The seeds themselves are about half cocoa butter and then we're adding additional cocoa butter so it just won't work at all if you add anything with liquid into your chocolate anything with water into your chocolate so we're always using powders and so all milk chocolate you need a milk powder so that's the basic raw materials one of the things that we're always shooting for is by the end of the year when i look at a financial statement i really want to see that number below 10 percent of the total gross sales so that's an interesting fact. I think one of the next videos we'll do is on financial statements again, just because that gives you the true picture of what your business is doing. Um, whether we can look at line items of how much your labor expenses should be, how much your raw materials should cost should be, your cost of sales, your packaging, all that kind of stuff. So really important in order to run a business properly in order to keep doing what you like to do, which in our case is making chocolate and growing a Hawaiian cacao industry and a, and a craft chocolate industry. Thanks for watching. See you next time.